$13.3 billion. That's what it costs to build the world's most expensive warship. The USS Gerald R. Ford weighs 100,000 tons. It's longer than three football fields, it takes seven years to complete, and when it finally hits the water, it carries more firepower than most entire countries. But here's what will shock you. The Navy is building 10 of these floating cities. Right now, two are under construction at the same time in a single dry dock. Something that's never been done before in naval history, the engineering behind launching these giants will leave you speechless. The Ford-class aircraft carrier program is the largest naval construction project in American history. We're talking about a $120 billion commitment to build 10 of these super carriers over the next 30 years. Each one replaces our aging Nimitz-class carriers that have served our nation for decades. These aren't just ships, they're floating airports that can launch fighter jets anywhere in the world. The USS Gerald R. Ford can launch 25% more aircraft per day than any previous carrier. It needs 25% fewer crew members to operate. And here's the incredible part. It will save taxpayers $5 billion in operating costs over its 50-year lifespan. The Navy calls this the CVN-21 program. CVN stands for Carrier, Vessel, Nuclear. The 21 represents the 21st century technology packed into these vessels. Every system has been redesigned from the ground up. The electromagnetic launch system, the advanced arresting gear, even the toilets had to be reimagined for this massive undertaking. If you're proud of American naval power, type PROUD in the comments below. Where giants are born. There's only one place on Earth where these carriers come to life. Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia. This facility has been building aircraft carriers since World War II. It's the only shipyard in America capable of constructing nuclear-powered carriers. Walking through this shipyard is like stepping into the future. Giant cranes tower 500 feet above the ground. Dry docks stretch longer than the Empire State Building is tall. Over 20,000 workers clock in every day to build these maritime fortresses. The main construction happens in Dry Dock 12. This massive concrete basin can hold over 100 million gallons of water. When it's time for launch, they flood this dock and the carrier literally floats for the first time. But getting to that moment takes years of precise engineering. The shipyard recently made history. For the first time ever, they're building two Ford-class carriers simultaneously in the same dry dock. The USS Enterprise and USS Doris Miller are both taking shape side by side. This dual construction approach will help the Navy maintain its carrier fleet as older vessels retire. The Digital Revolution. Here's something that would amaze anyone who's worked in construction. The USS Enterprise is the first aircraft carrier designed and built completely digitally. No paper blueprints, no hand-drawn plans. Everything exists in a computer model first. Workers carry tablets and laptops instead of rolled up drawings. They wear smart glasses that overlay digital instructions onto the real world. When they look at a piece of steel, they can see exactly where it goes and how it connects to other components. This digital approach cuts construction time and reduces errors. Workers can spot problems before they become expensive mistakes. Changes can be made instantly across the entire project. It's like building with virtual reality, except the end result is very real and very powerful. The three-dimensional computer model contains every bolt, every wire, every system in the carrier. Engineers can walk through virtual rooms before they're actually built. They can test how equipment will fit together without physically moving anything. This technology is revolutionizing how America builds its most complex weapons. The Modular Miracle Building a carrier isn't like constructing a regular ship. These vessels are so massive they must be built in sections called modules. Each module is essentially a piece of a giant puzzle. Some modules contain entire rooms, command centers, engine compartments, crew quarters, Others are structural sections of the hull or flight deck. The largest modules weigh as much as 900 tons. That's heavier than six fully loaded passenger jets. These modules are built in separate areas of the shipyard. Teams of welders, electricians, and engineers work on each section simultaneously. This parallel construction saves years of build time. Instead of building one section at a time, dozens of teams work on different pieces at once. When a module is complete, massive cranes lift it into position. These cranes are among the most powerful in the world. 
They can lift weights that would crush normal construction equipment. Watching a 900-ton module move through the air is both terrifying and beautiful. The precision required is incredible. These modules must fit together perfectly. We're talking about tolerances measured in fractions of an inch on structures that are hundreds of feet long. Before we continue with this amazing story, I want to ask for a quick favor. If this content interests you, please hit that like button and subscribe. Most viewers watch without subscribing, but your support helps us bring you more content like this. Did you click subscribe? Steel cutting to keel laying. Every carrier begins with a ceremony that dates back centuries. The steel cutting ceremony marks the official start of construction. The Navy invites dignitaries, shipyard workers, and military leaders to witness the first cut of steel. But this isn't just symbolic. That first piece of steel becomes part of the ship's hull. Modern carriers use high-strength steel that's specially designed for naval applications. This isn't regular construction steel. It's engineered to withstand the punishment of decades at sea. The keel laying ceremony happens months later. The keel is the backbone of the ship, the central structure everything else connects to. For the USS Gerald R. Ford, President Ford's daughter pressed a button to lower the keel into place. These ceremonies connect our modern Navy to centuries of shipbuilding tradition. Between steel cutting and keel laying, thousands of components are manufactured. Nuclear reactors are assembled, electronic systems are tested, the electromagnetic catapults are calibrated. Every piece must be perfect because there are no second chances once construction begins. The steel itself tells a story. Some of it comes from the previous USS Enterprise that served for 51 years. Taking steel from retired carriers and using it in new ones connects past and future. It's a way of honoring the service of previous generations while building for tomorrow. The Nuclear Heart At the center of every Ford-class carrier beats a nuclear heart. Two massive A1B reactors provide all the power these giants need. These aren't just any nuclear reactors, they're specifically designed for naval use. Each reactor can generate enough electricity to power a city of 100,000 people. Combined, they produce 250% more electrical power than previous carrier reactors. This massive power boost enables all the new technologies packed into these ships. The reactors are installed early in construction because they're so large. Once they're in place, the ship is literally built around them. These power plants will run for over 25 years without refueling. That's enough energy to circle the globe hundreds of times. Nuclear power gives these carriers unlimited range. They can stay at sea for months without stopping for fuel. The only limit is food and supplies for the crew. This endurance is crucial for America's ability to project power anywhere in the world. Installing nuclear reactors requires the highest security clearances. The workers who handle this equipment undergo extensive background checks. Every step is monitored and documented. The Navy takes no chances with nuclear technology. Revolutionary Launch Systems the most visible difference on Ford-class carriers is the absence of steam. For 70 years, carriers use steam catapults to launch aircraft. The Ford-class changes everything with electromagnetic aircraft launch systems. Emails Emails uses magnetic force instead of steam pressure. Linear motors accelerate aircraft from 0 to 150 miles per hour in just 2 seconds. The system is more precise than steam catapults and puts less stress on aircraft. This means planes last longer and need fewer repairs. The testing process for emails is incredible to watch. Before any aircraft launches, the system is tested with weighted sleds. These sleds weigh up to 80,000 pounds, as much as a loaded fighter jet. They're shot off the carrier deck into the James River where they're recovered and used again. Each Ford-class carrier has four emails catapults. They can launch different types of aircraft back to back without adjustment. Heavy fighters, light drones, cargo planes, Emails handles them all. This flexibility gives carrier commanders more options in combat. The electromagnetic system also launches aircraft more smoothly. Pilots experience less violent acceleration. This reduces pilot fatigue and allows for more precise launches. When you're launching jets in rough seas, precision can mean the difference between success and disaster. The floating moment. After years of construction, the most dramatic moment arrives. The carrier's first float. This is when the dry dock floods and the ship touches water for the first time. It's a moment that gives even experienced shipbuilders goosebumps. The flooding process takes days. Over 100 million gallons of water slowly fill the dry dock. Engineers monitor every detail. 
The ship must float level and stable. If something goes wrong, it could damage years of work. As water rises around the hull, the massive weight of the carrier gradually transfers from the construction blocks to the water itself. The ship literally comes alive as it begins to float. This is the moment when a collection of steel modules becomes a ship. For the USS Gerald R. Ford, the sponsor, President Ford's daughter, pressed buttons to start the flooding process. Family members of the ship's namesake traditionally have this honor. It connects the ship to the person it honors and to the families who sacrifice for our nation. Once floating, the carrier is moved within the dry dock for final construction. Cranes install the island superstructure. The flight deck receives its final coating. Electronic systems are connected and tested. The ship begins to look like the powerful weapon it will become. Testing the Giant Before any carrier enters service, it must prove itself through extensive testing. Sea trials push every system to its limits. These tests happen in the waters off Virginia where the Atlantic Ocean provides a real-world testing ground. The trials start with basic systems. Can the ship steer properly? Do the engines respond correctly? Are the navigation systems accurate? These might sound simple, but on a 100,000-ton vessel, nothing is simple. Then comes the exciting part, aircraft operations. Test pilots launch from and land on the carrier while it's moving through ocean swells. The new email system gets its first real workout. The advanced arresting gear catches aircraft traveling at dangerous speeds. During one memorable test period, the USS Gerald R. Ford launched over 10,000 sorties and logged more than 17,000 flight hours. The ship sailed over 83,000 nautical miles and transferred millions of gallons of fuel without a single mishap. These numbers prove American engineering excellence. The testing phase can last months. Every problem discovered gets fixed before the ship enters service. The Navy accepts nothing less than perfection because lives depend on these systems working flawlessly in combat. The Commissioning Ceremony The final step in bringing a carrier to life is the commissioning ceremony. This ancient naval tradition dates back centuries. It's the moment when a collection of steel and technology officially becomes a United States Navy ship. The ceremony follows strict protocol. The prospective commanding officer reads his orders. The crew manning the ship for the first time stands at attention. The American flag and commissioning pennant are raised simultaneously. At that instant, the ship officially joins the fleet. For major carriers like the Ford class, these ceremonies become national events. Presidents often speak. Thousands attend. The USS Nimitz commissioning in 1975 drew over 20,000 people. These ceremonies celebrate not just a new ship, but American naval power and the workers who build it. The commissioned carrier then begins its real mission, defending American interests around the world. These ships will serve for 50 years or more. They'll visit dozens of countries. They'll project American power and protect American allies across the globe. Each Ford-class carrier represents the best of American industry and innovation. From the steel workers in Virginia to the engineers in California, thousands of Americans contribute to these floating symbols of our nation's strength. The $13 billion price tag might seem enormous, but consider what taxpayers receive. A mobile airfield that can operate anywhere in the world's oceans. A ship that will serve our nation for decades. A symbol of American technological superiority that helps keep the peace. America's carriers have prevented more conflicts than they've fought in. Their mere presence changes the strategic balance in any region. The Ford class continues this tradition of peace through strength. These magnificent ships remind us why America remains the world's premier naval power. Our sailors deserve the best equipment we can build. Our allies count on American naval protection. And our enemies understand the power these carriers represent. The launch of each new Ford-class carrier demonstrates American resolve and capability. In an uncertain world, these ships provide the certainty that American naval power will endure. That's the incredible story of how America launches its most expensive and powerful warships. If you found this fascinating, please like this video and subscribe for more content about American military excellence. Thanks for watching and remember, freedom isn't free but it's always worth defending.